Hector Baldera, State Auditor of New Mexico, candidate for United States Senate. Uh, biographically, was raised in Wagon Mound, New Mexico, uh, in northern New Mexico. I'm a prosecutor and attorney by trade. And um, more importantly, um, husband of a school teacher uh, and father of three children in public school. And uh, one of my daughter uh, has special needs, uh, so we consider ourselves disability advocates as well in the community. Um, was raised by my grandfather and mother in public housing and on public assistance, uh, Medicaid, food stamps. And uh, I'm a product of New Mexico Hounds University in Las Vegas and the uh, University of New Mexico School of Law. Uh, what proposals would you support um, or introduce that would cut the deficit while at the same time promoting economic growth? Sure. Well, um, the first is there has to be tax reform. and uh, A revenue generator would be allowing the Bush tax cuts to uh, sunset and fade off into the past. Um, another area is to uh, collect on uh, Department of Interior oil and gas revenues that are being underbilled as we speak, according to the GAO. Uh, another area would be in human resources to begin to encourage federal employees uh, through attrition to take retirement packages. So I fundamentally believe both in cost and in, um, in positions, the federal government has to do a better job with less resources. Uh, in the coming decade. Uh, another area is to do a complete audit of all federal assets. Uh, right now the GAO has identified uh, that, that we don't even have a good grasp of all the federal buildings uh, and federal lands that we own and begin immediate assessments on what it is that we really need to move forward. I would also continue the reform on the appropriations process. <coughs> Even though they say that they've banned earmarks, there is still a considerable amount of pork that is um, going through the appropriations process without any specific accountability measures or methodology. And that type of pork spending has to stop. Um, furthermore, um, the GAO has identified that the IRS can do a better job in collecting its taxes. Uh, which also impacts revenue generation. I would continue to push all federal agencies, including the Department of Defense, to rein in their spending overseas. And we have a presence of, in over 100 nations right now, and it seems that we are far overextended when we have domestic threats, um, like poverty and the high school dropout rate that I believe are not being uh, invested um, at this time. So those are some of the areas from just deficit reduction that we would, we would target and attack. The second question is uh, more locally based. Uh, do you support the proposed Oregon Mountains Desert Peak uh, National Monument and why? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm generally always supportive of public lands designations uh, and protection of wilderness. But I'm also a proponent of fairness and making sure that um, that all interests are considered, but, but I'm supportive of that. If the Supreme Court were to strike down the health care law, which a lot of experts say they expect it will strike down at least part of that law, what steps, if any, do you think Congress should take to replace it? That is a hypothetical. It's tough to, to say until the Supreme Court uh, makes its final ruling. I know that they're very concerned with the mandate at this point. You know, the negotiations of that act um, was considered a private marketplace solution. And um, I believe that we need to continue to support portions of the act uh, that survive if, if the whole act does not survive intact. Adding, though, to that position, I also believe that we need to continue to invest in preventative care and, more importantly, um, basic health care in rural <coughs> areas. And I'm very suspicious 
um, year to year that accessibility rates are, are going to actually increase and that we're going to reduce costs. So I think that the act to me was an important step, but as a senator and as a watchdog, we have to continue to make sure that that New Mexico reduces costs of health care, especially in rural areas. And I'd be curious to see if we're, if we're able to drive down the uninsured number um, in any meaningful way. So I don't believe that the act will be enough in and of itself to, to drive those those two factors to improvement.